Uh, all right, I'm ready now. <laughs> man, man, him man hurt long with it. They had a damn biography sitting up here. <laughs> like, wow, man. No, I'm good though. <laughs> does the does the changes in the defense does it change in your role at all? I mean, when you're back there playing safety and everything. Man, everything for me is the same. Day one to now is the same thing. I always roll with, you know, be ready when I'm called upon. Know the defense, know the plays. I mean, shoot, out of seven years, I probably had like five different D coordinators in the league and college together. So it's, it's just same old, same old for me, honestly. Ryan, the pieces you seem to be the front, the front seven. Does, does anything change in the secondary schematically? No, no, we we doing the same thing, but like you said, the biggest difference is the front seven, and that's what I'm most excited about because we got some hungry young dogs down there, and I think what the defense is going to do for them is put them in better positions to play the game that they know how to play. Last year we had a couple issues, but this year I can really see us like fixing it and letting you know people rush who's supposed to rush, letting people cover who's supposed to cover, and that's just really the tweak. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just a simple change. Ryan, how do you able to keep same old, same old rolling with the changes? I mean, to me, is when I look back on my career, it's just how I came in and how I got where I got. I can't let that go. And uh, for a lot of guys, even had a young rook, I think Kobe asked him, he was like, man, we was watching special teams clips, and I mean, I'm everywhere on the tape. And he was like, you done played, you know, all these positions on special teams. I'm like, well, this is my bread and butter to get here and stay here. And, uh, and that's just my attitude toward everything, even on defense. It's just like knowing all the plays, being ready, being accountable. So that way, you know, when they call 2-6, you know, I'm in there. You know, you know what time it is, and you know what you're going to get. So it's just it stay the same, stay even killed. Looking in front of you, not seeing Bobby Wagner there, not seeing KJ right there. <laughs> it's funny, man. You know, you know my OGs. They know I got all nothing but love for them, and you know, change is a thing that's that's always inevitable. And uh, you know, you miss them a lot, but at the end of the day, it's a new season, it's a new team, and you got to find that new identity and new leaders got to emerge. And that's the beautiful thing about what we got going on now is that those leaders are starting to emerge in their own way. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be forced and it's all organic. And that's the thing that you love about this, man. We got a group of dudes, young, and we all trying to find out what we're trying to find out. We're trying to find our mission together. So the quicker we find that, the faster we can move along. Accountability. Clint talked about that too. Is that, mm. I, I guess is that kind of a, a different thing this year? Is, is no, 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 nothing different. It's just it's 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 just reiterating it. You know what I mean? Like last year, we always said it, but as you can see, sometimes it just didn't happen, and that was on both sides. But now, you know, you got new coaches, you got new players, and a new defense. And it's just, you know, all right, cool. We got these OTA periods now versus the last few years. I mean, guys will just slap a playbook at you, and it's time to go. But it's like that's hard to learn football that way, especially for a young guy coming into the league. So now that we got this time to actually sit here and break everything down, accountability is definitely going to be at the forefront because we done sit here and took you through football preschool, learning all these things little by little, stacking it up, and we're still not even close to getting everything together. But it's just learning the little things. So now that, yeah, you're definitely going to be accountable when training count comes around. We done been through it for months now. So – that's definitely a, you know, a focus. I look, man. First of all, I like. I know Kobe is going to be very competitive. I can see it already in how he moves, how he runs. I can already tell he has great ball skills, and I can already tell he's going to be a dog. I mean, you got to think to start across from Sauce Gardner, and no one's mentioning your name. It kind of puts a chip on your shoulder. You know what I mean? And he definitely showed that by balling out. And it's funny that no one really talked about him. It's like, dude, he was literally shutting down just like Sauce was. Um, Tariq, I mean, freak, go-go gadget arms, dude can touch you from standing over here, you know what I mean? Every time every time I look on the film, I'm just like, dude, dude, I'm tall, you know what I mean? Like, and I'm looking up like, God, like that dude is huge. So, I mean, just seeing his physical capabilities, it's just like, man, you, you really pray and you hope and you, you, you're on his ass because you want him just to learn how to put all that together and just be able to use that 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 athletic ability he's got. I mean, dude, like, go-go gadget arms, I mean, press, it's, it's funny to watch because it's just like, dude, he's touching him, he's seven yards away from him, so... Both of those guys are just going to be exciting. I can't wait to see them develop in camp, man. It's going to be exciting. With the two high stuff that you guys are doing more of now, are the safety spots a little bit more interchangeable versus the single high looks? Oh, definitely, definitely. It don't matter who who where, you know what I mean? And that's the, that's the beauty of it. And even the way we're doing it now, it's just that's the way you want to learn it. Even when you do play a single high defense and other, you know, schemes, you want to know both positions because you just never know who, you know, who's going to be ended up in those spots. And, I mean, yeah, you got guys who are considered box safeties or post safeties, but – the best defenses I've seen is when guys can do both. You know what I mean? You don't know who's doing what. So I think that's the benefit that we have. We, even with the guys, Maul and Nino, they can both go interchangeable. I can go interchangeable. A lot of guys can go interchangeable. So it's just a beautiful thing. Ryan, how different is it being closer to normal, I guess, this year after the last two years and having the OTAs be on the schedule and knowing about everything on Zoom? Mm -hmm. I guess just kind of being more back to 
it, just, it feels good, man. You know, it, I tell guys all the time, you know, there's guys like DT who've been in the league two years. Jordan Brooks never did an OTA. I didn't do an OTA here. My last OTA was in Atlanta. So it's like it's the first time for everybody. And it's just it's so cool because, like I said, you can do stuff over Zoom. You can watch film. Yeah, I can get But until you go out there and feel it, you'll never get the full feel of it. So just being out here, being with the guys, like I said, new team, young energy. We're finding ourselves and finding our identity getting familiar with all the calls and just getting back to the thing. I mean, it just feels good to get back to normal football, man. Like I said, it's been two, it's been years. And I've never done an OTA here. So it's like, this is the first time for me too. So it's just fun. Is your goal, one of your goals to be a full-time starter? Absolutely. Why not? I mean, shoot. I mean, you don't play this game to, you know, sit on the side. I mean, you know what I mean? That just goes for everybody. I mean, I think that's everybody's goal is to one day become a starter. And, uh, you know, that's always going to be mine. So I'm going to keep working towards it. How have you seen Jordan adjust to the role Bobby had of kind of cut to be in the deep here? I like it because it, it puts it on his shoulders and it put pressure on him to be better. You know what I mean? And he's done a great job, this, um, these OTAs, of getting guys together off the field. Like, hey, let's all hang out. Let's watch film together. You know, let's watch film after practice. And, you know, you can see him actually stepping it up into that role. And I think it'll be better when, you know, we get everybody back. You know, you get your big Al back and get Nino and Ma, and then he can actually grow within it some more. And, you know, but the cool thing right now is they're not here. So he has to step up. You know what I mean? It's like you have to speak because we're on you. You know, you the play caller. And, you know, he's getting ready for that role. And I think he's going to be very great at it. Do you think that, that's an adjustment for him? I mean, he seems kind of like a mild-mannered, soft-spoken mm-hmm. guy. Do you think that's a big adjustment for him? Absolutely. A Cam Chancellor was a mild-mannered guy. I've asked plenty of people around this building, how was Cam when he came in? He didn't say a word. You know what I mean? But when it was time for him to be that guy, Oh, I got to talk now. You know what I mean? So, and then he became who he was. So, Jordan's going to do, I think he's going to be just fine with it. It's something he'll grow right into. And like I said, it's going to be organic. You don't have to force it. You do it the way you do it, whether it's vocal, whether it's by how you play. You can lead in any type of way you want to. It's just he has to find his space with it. And I think he'll find it really soon. Jordan kind of stepping up and part of that being the guy's not here. Mm-hmm. Is that kind of for you also? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, and even then, like, like I said, leading in your own way. You don't got to force it. So, like me, my whole thing is go hard, always, you know, going balls to the wall. And that, for me, has been the thing that guys kind of cling to. And so, you know, when they come to me, they respect that. You know what I mean? Because I back up my words with the action. So, you know, it's all organic. You know what I mean? I find my own little space to do it. When I need to talk, I talk. When I don't need to, I let the guys, you know, when, the, when they come back, that's their role. And I just lead in my own way. You know what I mean? You don't got to force anything. I love them both. I mean, I think Sean Desai is a freaking, uh, what you think, a professor. He, like, he sits in the lab watching film all day. Just, you know what I mean? Like, the things he says in meetings, just like, dude, I've never thought about it like that before. Like, like a real football nerd. And then K. Scott is just energy. He's the enthusiasm. He's just, he's on you. You know what I mean? He's intense. That's the word I'm looking for. Very intense. Like, I mean, we can be talking, and he could be writing something on the board and literally call your name and not look at you. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, oh, you know what I mean? He catch you off guard. So, That one-two punch with them two, I mean, I think it's going to be awesome. I think it's going to be dope.